companion planting. So you have your garden, you have, you have everything set up. You have your tomatoes, your lettuce, your whatever. But what if something bad happens? What if the pests start arriving? What if uh, they're not thriving like you thought you would? Companion planting is a really, really good way to avoid these common problems. Companion planting is pretty much uh, using certain plants as a companion to benefit your other plants. For example, companion plants have a variety of benefits. Some are great at deterring pests from other plants. Others are great for attracting pollinators like bees. Others can even improve your soil fertility or they can act as supports for, you know, certain plants like tomatoes or beans and things like that. Companion plants are always a good thing to have. You can't really go wrong with them. Some are even great at uh, suppressing weeds because, you know, they kind of shade out the weeds. And um, in general, they just are really good, kind of like a foundation for your main plants. One of the most uh, kind of famous and most used examples of companion planting is planting basil with tomatoes. Everyone loves tomatoes. Everyone loves to grow tomatoes in their garden. It's a staple uh, plant. But the problem is tomatoes are very susceptible to many pests, many problems. But basil is a great way to kind of get rid of those issues for the most part because uh, basil is really good at attracting pests, especially thrips, for instance. They can also deter moths in a lot of cases, uh, and you know, moth larvae and things like that and worms, they really enjoy tomatoes. So being able to repel those with uh, some basil, great for your tomato success, of course. And as an extra bonus, basil is really good at attracting pollinators like bees, so they can also pollinate your tomatoes in the process. Now, dill, which is an herb, uh, dill in general is good to plant with just about everything because it attracts ladybugs. And ladybugs are one of the most beneficial plants uh, that your garden could possibly have. They are great because they eat a lot of smaller insects that would otherwise harm your garden. So, kind of like uh, bringing in the extra defense system once you plant that dill. Garlic is again great for planting just throughout your garden because it can deter aphids. Everyone hates aphids because they just really devour just about anything they can get their pinchers on. And planting garlic around your garden is a great way to do that. I remember uh, I had a garden once, in-ground garden, which we planted just a whole barrier of garlic uh, around the entire perimeter of the garden with everything, all the pro produce inside. Uh, you could do that or you could just kind of dot it around, you know. But either way, gar uh, garlic is a really good thing to put in your garden. Nasturtiums are popular brightly colored flowers. Besides just looking nice, they can attract caterpillars. Now, ca it's kind of like uh, you're sacrifice the, the nasturtiums are sacrificing themselves to help your other plants because the caterpillars will go to the nasturtiums and eat them instead of eating like uh, brassica sort of plants like your cabbages and things like that. So your cabbages and your other brassicas will be in good shape, your nasturtiums will suffer, but at least they are keeping the problem contained. Parsley is a favorite of mine. It is great for attracting uh, beneficial insects, especially pollinators, plus uh, having parsley in your garden is really, it's just fragrant, you could use it for cooking, really good plant to have. And uh, it's very easy to grow, you know, if you have a cool, moist area, really good to plant next to your tomatoes especially. So overall, a very beneficial plant. Now, sunflowers are not so much, they don't have so much to do with pests, but rather support of other plants. Uh, Traditionally, I mean, Native Americans figured this out, where they would plant sunflowers next to beans, for instance, pole beans. So, you know, the stalk of the sunflower is very sturdy, kind of just like a pole of wood. So those pole beans will just climb up the stalk of the sunflower. You won't need to get any extra supports. Um, it's also good for planting next to a tomato for that reason, you know, it can kind of grab on like that or cucumbers, you know, that can also work. Tansies are also really good if you have a pest problem because they really attract um, bugs that eat other bugs. So ladybugs, ladybirds, that sort of thing. Um, bringing in the beneficial insects, your non-beneficial insects will soon be gone for the most part. 
They can even repel certain non-beneficial insects like cutworms and things like that as an extra bonus. But these are only a few examples of companion plants. In general, it's good to have a few companion plants dotted throughout your garden. That way, you know, your plants can really benefit from the advantages they have to offer. And, you know, if all, if all goes well, you should have a decline of non-beneficial insects, an increase of beneficial insects, and uh, your plants overall will have more support, maybe even less weeds, increased soil fertilization, all that good stuff. So, yeah, pretty much a really, really important thing to have in your garden instead of just the main plants, you know? So it's a really uh, kind of filled out garden once you include the companion plants. But that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you leave a like, maybe subscribe. And I make a few videos throughout the week, so don't miss those.